Do you use this kind of crown remover? Or maybe a pneumatic one? And um, is it really effective? Sometimes. Well, it means that it's not that effective then. And um, do you feel comfortable when using it? Not really? What about your patients? Do they feel comfortable? No? Well, I think you should probably watch this short message then. Actually, all traditional crown removers face three main problems. The first problem is that they waste a lot of energy into the ligament, which absorbs most of your strength. This explains why patients suffer and also that you have a poor efficiency. The second problem is that you never know what you are going to remove, especially when dealing with the buildup under the crown. If you are lucky, this is what might happen. But if you're not lucky, this is what could happen, or even this. The weakest link will always break. And who knows, you could even remove the tooth. The third problem is that you are not Superman. You can't see through the crown. You can't say what's under the crown. You can't say what is the accurate shape of the preparation. And so, when you pull, especially on posterior teeth, it is absolutely for, impossible for you to make sure that you pull along the axis of the crown. And this induces major risks of fracture. This is probably why most dentists don't use these crown and bridge removers anymore. They prefer to waste time and birth to cut and um, sacrifice the crown this way. So, let me now show you quickly how to use the one key. First of all, you are going to uh, drill a little window on the buckle sorry, the buckle, the mesiobuckle, or the mesiolingual side of the crown. You just choose the easiest axis for you. Then you are going to enlarge this window slowly until you can see or feel uh, with the burr that you have reached the junction between the prep and the crown, or if you prefer, until you can see the cement line. Usually, I would say that this operation will not take you more than 30 to 40 seconds. The third step consists in drilling into the cement through the window and following uh, the inner side of your crown down to the center of the crown, down to the center of the prep, in order to create this little tunnel. And I would say that uh, this operation shouldn't shouldn't take you more than another five seconds. Now, all you have to do is to take this key, so big tooth, big key. The actual size is much smaller, of course. So then, you introduce the key down to the bottom of your tunnel, and with two or three fingers, you just make a little twist, like this. No rocking movement, only twisting. And you see, look at the margin here. Actually, you just lift the crown up. Oh, I know what you think. It looks too good to be true. But there's nothing magic here. It's all about mechanics. So, let's analyze what happens here. First of all, one key doesn't pull on the tooth, one key pushes on the tooth, which means no discomfort at all for your patients. It's the same as if your patient was chewing. All what your patient will feel is a little pressure on his tooth. And if you have a buildup under the crown here, you will never remove it because you will now push on it. You are also between the prep and the crown, so you don't lose any energy into the ligament. All your strength, all your energy is now fighting against the cement. So you will need far less strength than if you were pulling the crown. 
final point, the two forces into the crown and on the prep are exerted at the center of the prep, along the axis of the preparation. And you see, if I put the crown here on my finger, the crown is free to go where it wants to go. It's looking for the easiest way, the way of least resistance. So I would say that the crown is looking for the weakness of the cement. And this is the reason why you will never need to use your plain hand uh, to remove your crowns. Two or three fingers are far enough. I met a lot of Wamki users around the world and most of them expressed the same surprise when using the Wamki for the first time. They all had the feeling that the crown was already loose. So please, when using the Wamki for the first time, take it easy, no more than two or three fingers. Now, let's summarize the advantages of the WAM key for you. First of all, it's much faster than any other solution. It's even faster than to cut it all. And of course, you will also save your burrs and your turbines. In most cases, a minute is far enough to remove a single crown. And in case you have to remove a bridge, you will spend a minute per abutment, but you won't have to divide to separate the different elements of your bridge. You can keep it in one piece. Second advantage, it's extremely efficient. Wamki users usually say uh, that it works in 90 to 95% of the cases. There is only one case actually where it will never work. Here, on the lower anteriors. They are too small. So don't even try it. And of course, the best indications will be molars and premolars. In those cases, it will be a child's play. Third advantage for you, it's extremely gentle. No discomfort for your patient, no risk for the supporting tooth, no risk to remove the buildup. And final advantage, you can reuse your crown or your bridge. In most cases, you will reuse them as provisionals. And if you haven't modified the margins, you will not even have to reline them. You will not even have to fix the hole, just leave it uh, with the temporary cement in it. Usually your patients will be happy with this. And in some cases, you will even be able to reuse them permanently. You will just have to fix the hole with composite, or if you prefer, you can also send the bridge or the crown back to your lab to have it fixed. Here is a tooth, for example, that had a really poor prognosis and the patient was not ready to get an implant. So we preferred to remove his crown in order to do the root canal treatment in the best conditions. And as you can see, we drilled very cautiously in order to avoid breaking the porcelain and we even remove the porcelain around the window in order to avoid touching it with the WAM key. I also wish you to notice that we could have done this window on the lingual side, but for the video it was much easier for us on the buccal side, of course. As usual, we first try the smaller instrument, the WAM key number one, because it works closer to the vertical axis, but this time it was too small and was turning loose, so we removed it and tried the number two. And as you can see, it worked magically. And right after the treatment, we were able to reuse the crown and to re-cement it permanently, which was an excellent compromise for us and for the patient. So, I hope that my presentation convinced you that WAMKI is presently the best solution for removing crowns and bridges. And I especially hope that I convinced you to try it. If you need more arguments to switch to WAMKI, I also recommend you to watch our clinical cases on the website. This can be quite instructive. And if you have any question, please feel free to contact us.
Thank you very much for your attention and have nice crown and bridge removals. Bye-bye.